Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to start uh, chapter two, kinematics vectors and coordinates. In particular, we're going to introduce a coordinate system, Cartesian coordinates, and learn how to represent and manipulate vectors, do vector algebra, vector multiplication in these coordinates. Okay, so to begin, we're going to define what we will call rectangular or Cartesian coordinates in three dimensions. Okay, so what we need to do is define three independent directions, and we're going to do that by defining three unit vectors, and we'll call them i, j, and k. They're unit vectors that are constant in direction in space. They have unit length, and they're mutually perpendicular. And this is exactly what I mean by that in this key point i dot j is zero, j dot k is zero, and i dot k is zero. And remember, dot products are commutative. Okay, now we want this coordinate system to be a right-handed coordinate system, and the reasons for that are not clear yet, but just trust me on that. So we use the same right-hand rule that we did when we defined the Cartesian product, or sorry, the cross product. So put your right hand, thumb in the direction of i, fingers in the direction of J, and K needs to be coming straight out of your hand. Okay. And then you can do thumb in the direction of J, fingers in the direction of K, and I should be coming straight out of your hand, and so on. Okay, so this is a right-handed rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. And the, and the vectors are unit vectors, and so this is the equation 2.2 is a representation of i, j, and k being unit vectors. So we know they're mutually orthogonal and they're of unit length. Now, you need to use a definition of dot product to verify that this is indeed the case with 2.2, but that's a fairly easy verification. So the next thing we want to do is express or represent a vector in these coordinates. So let's take a vector A, and we know from the previous chapter that a vector is a directed line segment. It has a direction and a length, and we can move it all around three space as long as we retain the direction and the length, and it's the same vector. Okay, so the representation in the coordinate system is given as follows. We look at the projection of A along each of the coordinate directions, I, J, K, and we had the definition of projection in the last chapter. So A dot I, a number, multiplied by the vector, unit vector I, A dot J, a number, and so on. And these are the projections onto the vector, the coordinate directions, and we just add them up using the standard method of head to tail, like we did already. Now I want to, I'll, draw, I'll consider a picture of this in a second, but let's have some notation. The scalars that multiply each of the unit vectors are referred to as the components of the vector, A. So components are numbers, and they're just the numbers that multiply each unit vector, defining the three directions for this coordinate system. So we may want to denote them as a1, a2, or a3, for example. Sometimes people 
denote them as AX, AY, or AZ. And uh, mostly I'll use A1, A2, A3 in the notation. So this is the picture we have of the general vector A and the coordinate system I, J, and K and the projections along each of the coordinate directions. Okay, so we add them up and that gives us a direct, using the vector addition method that I talked about, and that gives us a vector A. Now, what we want to do next is to determine the length or the magnitude of A in this coordinate system. Okay, now in this diagram here, I'm not going to go through this in great detail, it's a useful exercise for you, but we see what do we see? We see two right triangles. There's one there. Convince yourself that it's a right triangle. And one here. Now with two right triangles, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuses from the sides. And we know we can easily get the lengths of the various sides from the components. Now, I know I'm going over this rather quickly, but there's a little argument down here using the Pythagorean theorem, and I will leave it to you to go through that. But using this simple geometry, we see that the length squared of the vector is the sum of the squares of the components. Very nice result. But if we just want the length, not the length squared, so the length of A is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Okay, now we can talk about vector addition and scalar multiplication of vectors. And the, so let's take two vectors, A and B, and write out the representation in this Cartesian coordinate system. So the sum of A and B is just the sum of the individual components for each respective direction multiplied by the direction. Easy. And if we have a scalar times a vector, when the vector is represented in components, we just multiply each component by the scalar. Now, dragging along this i, j, and k is fine, and it's useful, but if it's understood that our fixed coordinate system is defined by these three mutually perpendicular or orthonormal vectors, we could just identify the vector with the components. We call that a three-tuple. So A1, A2, A3 separated by commas and beginning and end with the curved brackets. All right. And then if we wanted to add two vectors, we could add their three-tuples and it's just the sum of each component multiply a vector by a scalar, multiply each of the components by that same scalar. Okay, this is pretty straightforward, I think. And so it's a good time to stop this lecture. And next time, I will talk about the dot product in these coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates, and this cross product in these coordinates. So that's it for today. Bye.